Hello? Okay, I think I will start. Um, my name is Christian Gall and I'm working in the HPC team at SUSE. And so I want to have a, we have a kind of, or we have a HPC software stack. We do not, or we not yet can deploy really nodes like with Werewolf. Werewolf is on package hub now, but we also are trying to get our own simple solution which aims for smaller clusters, but I will have a small introduction about HPC in general and then we'll go over the different solutions. Oh, it's working. Um, and then I will shortly talk about our own HPC stack and what is the kind of nearly different thing to a normal Linux system and why we package, uh, package packages in a different way. Okay. So, a HPC system, what's a HPC system? It's a high performance computing system. It consists of just simple nodes and it's always a cluster. So, we can have some hundred nodes, but even some thousand nodes. So, that's always, you have always to keep that in mind. Um, the complete HPC environment is Linux dominated. There is nearly nothing else running on it. There was, 10 years ago, Microsoft tried to introduce Windows, but it's not there anymore. Um, and most of the systems you know are placed at big labs, but also bigger companies like car manufacturers and aerospace industry also has bigger cluster installations. The a cluster itself is most times installed by the manufacturer, which is HP, Lenovo, or someone of this kind, or Gray. Um, but I always put some kind of the secret source on top of the Linux OS they installed in kind of that you can manage the nodes, <laughs> install special software, or for example, install TensorFlow today is a big deal or other mach machine learning libraries which are not part of the SUSE software stack yet. Um, Cray itself, which is uh, one of the bigger, biggest manufacturers of HPC systems in the world, also uses less, a SLES base, which means we have a relatively big market share there, but it's not always recognized as SUSE. So it's, they use the kernel, but most users know that there's somewhere down uh, SUSE running, but it's more gray. Um, for the rest of the clusters which are freely installed, CentOS is the quasi standard because that the reason for that is it's a free kind of enterprise Linux distribution and we hope that this could change in the future because we now, with Leap 15, we also now have an enterprise grade um, OpenSUSE distribution. Debian still has a mine shell, but not a market shell. And the reason for that is that, for example, if you buy the, the, such a big cluster, you need drivers for a relatively exotic file system like Luster or Panasas or what else. And they simply do not provide um, drivers for Debian. Also, Mellanox does not provide drivers for their cards for Debian and things like that. And if you, and if you know that um, a big part of the price or you spend on an HPC system is made up for the network, it makes no sense to have an operating system which is, does not support your hardware. So, what do we mean, or what? When I speak of HPC stack, what do I mean? On the one hand, it's about deploying the nodes. So this bare metal installation, like getting really the nodes, uh, the, the operating system to the nodes. Um, also, at that point, I want to mention there are kind of this open stack solution, which could also install bare metal. And people are asking why are you not use virtualization? The simple reason is there is a too big import, um, uh, performance impact with the virtualization technologies. You always have to think it's, uh, and virtualization is for, for kind of having the um, resources of one node shared to multiple users, where in the cluster you do the opposite. You, 
you, you, you give the resources of several, and this could even be several thousand nodes, can run one MPI application. So the goal of HPC deployment is to, to have the nodes as same as possible, as simple as possible, so that m the most of the, so that all of the resources go to this one simple binary. Um, also, like Werewolf or Xcat, which I will come later on, they also um, manage DHCP, DNS, and all this kind of stuff for the nodes. So they, uh, the the class is always kind of in a protected network segment, and so in this network segment, you have to do all this kind of single stuff, which is in most times for normal installation done by other servers. So you also have to set this kind of things up. Yeah. So and then there is the software stack, which means this is the thing, it's built around the, the MPI libraries and you then have to, comp the MPI libraries are the basic network library, so it's, a mes mes it's called message passing interface. It's a standard, but there are several implementations with the pros and cons, and that also depends in most times on the specific use case. So the user one, a wants um, open MPI, but the second one says, oh no, I always um, used MVR pitch, so which is, and you, you have to provide both of them. So that's a software stack, and because user A and B are using the cluster at the same time through a queuing system, um, or workload manager, it's kind of, you have to provide them in parallel, and that's, for example, not really possible with RPM packages, or RPM packages are not made for that, they are just made to have one single version of one single software. Um, also, most in, this, in the software stack, you also have to provide a workload manager to, for, to make it possible for the users to run jobs on the HPC cluster. And in our, yeah, and there are one of the threes which are used at the moment, that's Slurm PBS and Grid Engine. So, now, for deploying the nodes, XCAD is widely used. Um, it's open source and it supports many platforms. It comes from IBM, so it supports all of this kind of crazy uh, uh, big machines, also S390 architecture and things like that. Um, the, how you deploy a Linux cluster it's a relatively small section in the documentation, but it's there. Um, it's used in many facilities and it has many different deployment methods. You can say, okay, I want to deploy the node as, uh, as, as, so as a RAM image or I want, well, I want to deploy it, uh, install the operating system on the hard disk, which is on the node. Um, the contra is, the information is stored in many different databases, so it's kind of hard to get a backup from your master node. Um, the documentation is really poor and misleading. It's kind of the, somebody wrote something and it's on the internet, you find it by Google, and somebody else wrote something else and you find that, so and you, you have to find out what's the right thing to do. Um, it also has this own image building processes, which means they strip down the images and what I once ran over, they also used all the locals, which means you were not able to change the local time of the computing node, which is if you're really debugging and you want to know, oh, this happened at that time and it's just in the US local and you're in Germany and, you, and then you have to think about, oh, this was three hours and this is now there and what local do I have now on that node? So it's also not good and it's not so easy to control that image building. And it has too many, because it's a relatively old and grown product, there are at least most, in most cases, five ways to achieve the same thing. So they use, for example, init scripts to create files, then somebody thought, okay, init scripts are not cool, and then there's also a system script which can manipulate files, and you do not really know uh, which thing I should use now and it's not available at Package Hub in the moment. So then there's Werewolf, what John talked about. Um, I think he also, the thing is that, I will 
go to the cons exactly. Um, that's also the information, and it's not really much information you really need on the master nodes. It's just to know, okay, which node has, has which hardware address. And so, as well, XCAD as well will use in both cases a fully fledged database to, to store this information, but it's not just, it's just a, just a small table. I don't like the idea of having a full database for just a table with one megabyte or something like that. Um, also, it has its own image building process. And you have this VNFS, uh, John talked about, it's just a new layer of complexity, which is not a standard tools we want to use. So my idea was, okay, we simply could go there and create something, um, oh, sorry, there's also Cobbler, which I looked into for deployment of the nodes. It also had some advantages, but the biggest disadvantage using Cobbler is that it's not really uh, used in, uh, it's not, it was not built in for, for HPC. Um, and also in our own distro, it's, we have different versions because it's on the one time, on the one hand, it's also used by um, SUSE manager and they provide their own version. So it was complicated to get the right thing running. Yeah, and it just possible to deliver images with um, Cobbler and it's not, you do not have DNS or DHCP management because that's also, you want to do, yeah. So my idea was to have something like class type, which is really simple and minimalistic. It just does the job of bringing images to the nodes and I wanted to use as much SUSE tools as possible. So the tools I try to use is a the so-called genders database, which is just a small flat file, but you have a kind of database syntax to ask to it. So it, you can ask, um, I want to have the information of the node with that IP, or I want to know, um, do you know this MAC address and what node belongs to that? Um, and then I wanted that genders. Um, and for that, to, to, duck this, to, to put this together, like with a duct tape, I use just DNS mask, and DNS, DNS mask has this quite important um, possibility to run a script on kind of every event. So if DNS mask sees a new node, I can run a script and see, okay, do I know that node? What, and, and what should I do with that node? And then also I can, uh, the script could uh, is also run on, on a TFTP event. So if I send out a conf, um, uh, image to the node, I know, okay, I've now sent out an image to that node. I believe it's now installed and the next time it could boot in a local manner. And for this all of image building stuff, I simply decided to use Kiwi, which is a well-known SUSE tool and it has many cool features already built in. So we do not have to have separate documentation of, oh, how do I deploy the node? We can simply point to Kiwi where we have all the possibility maintained by sources in. Yeah. Um, the status at the moment, I implemented in, in Bash some uh, a month ago. Um, yeah, and at the moment I'm re-implementing that stuff in Lua. I will come later to that. Yeah, and it uses that thing. I also packaged it so that if you install the package, you also get the script on the right directory and DNS mask and Kiwi on the node so that you can immediately start. But it's just work in progress. Um, yeah, in the future, what I'm doing actually is to have this, uh, to have a Lua implementation because DNS mask itself can call Lua and that's had the big, um, big advantage that this, you have a proper init function, you have proper global variables, and you do not have to parse. So with, if it, the script is called, you would have always to parse all the things again. So with Lua, this is a bit better. And um, all in all, we have a smaller resource footprint. The first thing I did was then to have a proper, to have an interface to genders in Lua, which was a work of some days. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the future plans. I want to perhaps more interactive things. So for example, if I 
boot a unknown node, it just gets the next free address, which uh, the next free node. So if I can define in the database, okay, I have now 10 computing nodes, and if a new Mac comes, the first one will get compute node 01, the next compute one node 02, and perhaps it would be better to have a more interactive way. Uh, also thinking, uh, because for the configuration management, I wanted to use auto we wanted to use salt because this is also now part in SUSE. Um, not to use genders at all, but to use a salt pillar, but I don't know if this is really working. Yeah, and this weird looking, the logic constructs in Bash are not always nice, so that's the reason why I'm doing it in Lua. Yeah, that's so the components I'm talking about here. You here have DNS mask doing all the initial things and providing DNS, DHCP to the nodes. We have the script which then connects it to the database and we also store the information about the images and how to boot the images also in the database. Yeah. And for then the, the configurations, you sometimes also you cannot configure all the things in the node, you also have to configure additional things that we will use salt because there you can then really say if something changes, you do not have to reboot the whole class, you can just have salt to do it for you. Yeah, that's the DHCP workflow. And yeah, now the thing about, I also wanted to talk about what makes it different between a HPC software stack and a normal installation. So you have the problem in a HPC system, um, that on the one hand you have different users using different software and especially different versions of the same kind of software. And also some of the scientific software depends heavily on special magic versions to run and to produce the right or the, the results they have before. And you always want to have reproduce, reproducibility so that if you ran the simulation 10 years ago, you, you run it today again then you want the same results, and this also means that you need the old kind of implementations of it. Um, one thing, for example, in the, and also you need the same implementation, for, uh, you see these different MPI libraries, that's qu quite important because MPI just defines a standard, but in some things it does not really define how to do that. You can see it um, if you have this kind of, you have this gather where you ask the nodes to send you one um, result and then you add it up. But MPI itself does not um, define how to add it up. So there can be data overflows and underflows. So, and one, the one piece of software wants the data underflow, the other the overflow, and so you have to have these parallel versions. Yeah, you have to have the parallel software versions. And the solution for the whole problem is enrollment modules. So um, the, what's now an enrollment module that's, that has this called um, the TC shell, impl the TC, TC shell implementation. That was the first implementation, implementation there now since I think 20 years. And it just goes there, it is a tickle shell, and there you replace just path, LD library path, and all these things, you put them in front, and then um, you have an command line interface to is that you can type module available, and then you see, okay, I have this kind of software available, then you load the module, and then immediately you get another compiler, you get another FFTV library, you get another MPI library, and if you type module available in a supercomputing center, you will get three, six uh, pages on your, sh on your terminal seeing, oh, this is the, all these versions are now available. Um, but the, uh, the, it was not, um, it, it's very old and it wasn't really developed in the last two years, so um, there is a kind of, the, there's now um, Lua Elmod as a drop-in replacement came in because it has now another, some better features. So it was, for example, not possible with the normal environment kind of really to hide modules because you do not always want to show the users all of the available modules, some, some they really do not have to see. Um, and it, 
it's also you can also better formulate dependencies um, with this Lua modules. So that's the reason why we in our stack also use the uh, Lua modules. Um, yeah, that's what kind of software stacks what are out there which depend on the module and provide different scientific software. Um, that is uh, OpenHPC, which then also has all together, which also provides provisioning, but also have a lot of these different libraries and they build it for you on their own um, open build service, so you can download them from them directly. Um, it's available for CentOS and SLES, not SLES 15, uh, SLE 15, I think, and it's not available for um, for Leap. And also want to mention this other two things where you then can relatively easily build your your rest of the software stack, like simulation software, like specialized FFTV libraries or, or other things. Um, yeah. So, and then we now, since, since I think one or two years, we also have our own implementation of that. So we have our own H, um, HPC stack or software stack where we also put in the MPI libraries with module files so that if the customer can install this whole stuff in a pretty easy way and controlled way. And he still can have different MPI libraries on the system. Um, yeah, and we also are now available from ARM. We also now have Slurm as a workload manager. Yeah, but not, not automatic deployment. That's what I'm actually working on with Cluster. Yeah, that's all I wanted to tell you. Thank you for your attention. Are there questions? Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. All you're showing there is like to use some uh, uh, deployment for that to set up on the uh, bare metal machine. But, yeah. Uh, uh, what about the open stack, like uh, that part in HPC area? How do you like? Uh... Uh, we also looked into OpenStack for deployment, but it's kind of really complicated because you have this. You have to have at least, I think, three several servers at least with the open, and that's just too complicated. We just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. It, it is possible, and there are kind of companies um, deploying software cluster, uh, HPC clusters with OpenStack. But I think that's also possible because they are doing it with their own engineers and they know how to set up OpenStack. It's not something I really want to provide and send out to the field. I cannot really write it simply down and say, okay, it's, you cannot do it in a day or something like that. You really have to know what you do. Uh, even forgot the complete uh, complexity. Uh, what about the performance? Do you think uh, in that uh, cloud, uh, virtualization environment, uh, is it uh, affordable for the performance loss? You mean the performance of deployment or the performance of the node? The performance of the programs and the performance, it simply depends only on, on the node image itself. So and you do not deploy a cluster that often. You make configurational changes, but you, you have sometimes uptimes for more than a year for a single node. You just want to redeploy it relatively quickly. If it breaks, you just you do not really do to find out why it broke. So you simply install a new node, and that's it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Actually, in in ref. Is this on? Yeah. I, can't, I can't hear myself. Uh, in reference to the OpenStack question, I know OpenStack is complicated, but SUSE has an OpenStack deployment distribution. So I know that's something to think about. It. Yeah, yeah that's if. And 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 the other the other thing I was th well, did you want to comment on that or? 
Uh, frankly, I don't see any reason why we sh would employ a private cloud for our HPC. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying the comment about it being complicated yeah. that you need special. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. No, that's that that. Yeah, no, again, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just commenting on where when we get OpenStack. The, the other thing, though, and this, this gets back to the earlier, the earlier topic, and I wonder if it applies to your situation, where do you deploy on, is there any mapping between host names and physical hardware, or yeah. you, just view, oh, you just view it as a pool of computer that's nodes? The, that, that's what we want to have really provide, that we, have, that we can have different methods of mapping. So. The basic method um, is basically no mapping, but so and that you have a mapping from a manufacturer, like you have all the MAC addresses, and then you can simply get them out. Or you could also have at the moment the mapping would be first node would so the first node you boot would get the first free okay, node so address. But also I I think and it's also possible with that solution to because I can see what TFTP file, the node notes, that you can really sit on the node and say, okay, simply connect the monitor and the keypad and say, okay, this is now node compute 07 and connect, that's also right. possible. So, so whenever you boot this box, it always gets the same yeah. address. Yeah, as, as, soon as, I, as, yeah. As, as soon as I put it into the yeah. gender database yeah. and then it's always that node. Yeah, and then you, and if you want to replace that node, because of the sake for simplicity, you simply open the file, delete the MAC address in there, and then if you just replace it, you, in the normal case, you would have connected the monitor and the keyboard to it, then you simply say, okay, put it now at that node, and then it's added again to the Perfect. database. Perfect. Okay, thanks. I hope so.